the fact that we also know we have such a tight range here from 320 to 311, the focal point going into this week, at least the start of the week, at least until one of those two levels gets confirmed, maybe stay away from beta. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Spring slowly but surely is coming into bloom. And if you are like me, especially if you live on the, the northeast of, of the United States, you know how horrible of a winter we've had. 70 degrees yesterday, 70 degrees the day before. Today's 40 and oh, by the way, it's going to snow again next week. So Mother Nature uh, is still not ready uh, to get her nails out of our back. But anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, stock market, let's talk about that. Um, so the Dow, the S&P, the Russell, all at all year highs, right? All time highs. Uh, obviously the big catalyst this week, a lot of the big cap names, uh, a lot of the old worldly names, um, big, big run-ups. Uh, the 1.9 a uh, trillion dollar bill finally got pushed through uh, by the Democrats. Uh, it's going to help out a lot of uh, people who were tragically affected by this whole pandemic. So hopefully they'll get a little bit of breathing room. I know it's a very, very small amount of money, but the point is anything uh, will help and, and, and should help. And this really kind of fueled the fire uh, of the markets and the Dow went nuts. The Dow went absolutely nuts. Um, huge, huge move over 4%. The S&P uh, added 2.5%. And the problem is, it, it's the NASDAQ. It, the NASDAQ continues to be uh, the very, very, kind of like the, the, the red-headed stepchild. No offense to any red-headed stepchild uh, children in the, in the audience. But you know, you gotta look at the cues, right? You gotta look at the cues, and this is where uh, leadership or, or world time, old world, old school leadership uh, is is provided. You know, the Apples of the world, the Facebooks of the world, the Amazons and the Teslas and everything else in between. And this is a this is an obvious, very, very painfully obvious area that is lagging the market. So we had three weeks, you know, three and a half weeks of pretty aggressive selling. Um, and if, again, if you've been watching this broadcast just in the last month, I've, I've been sell bias. I've been sell bias. Uh, my primary focus has been uh, the NASDAQ 100 names. That's kind of where um, where the aggressive order flow, the option flow, the money flow, the institutional bias, the institutional darlings, the cult stocks, they all live. And they, they just haven't been performing for the last three weeks. And it's pretty obvious. We've been talking about the aggressive uh, disconnect they had, but they finally woke up this week, right? And, you know, look, you could say what you want and you could call it what you want. Uh, somebody will turn around and say, look, it was a very, very aggressive dead cat bounce from a pretty, pretty aggressive sell-off. I mean, the queues literally went from February the 16th from 338 and they went to what, 297 in three weeks. I mean, this is a big aggressive sell-off and, and a lot of people who were long uh, growth stocks throughout throughout that time, you know, you really saw a really major haircuts. Some stocks got hit for like 40%, 30%, 20%. So you saw a major, major decline, and what we saw in the last three weeks, and you're not, you're not going to really, you're not going to really tell about the three percent scoreboard that the Nasdaq rallied back three percent. It's more of the question of kind of what happens next. Now, before anybody starts uh, with their theory, and, you, and again, I could, you know, if I'm in a room full of especially newer traders, I, I could convince them one way or another uh, which way the market's going to go next. But it's not the point of trying to convince somebody. Uh, what's going to happen next? The point is gather the information, make an intelligent uh, read of what you think is going to happen next based on technical analysis. So we had the three-week sell-off, right? Uh, we had the bounce uh, off the 150-day moving average. And the most important part, especially, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you know how important uh, this 320 level is on the QQQs. And if you saw what happened on Thursday, right? On Thursday's session, we got rejected perfectly right at supply at 320. And Friday, we put in a lower high, lower low, but the good news is we did hold the rising five-day moving average. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast, who've been trading with me for the last 11 years um, in the webinar, you, you kind of know how important that five-day moving average is. So the good news is we held the five-day moving average off the bounce, right? That's positive, that's the shortest term sentiment. 
However, we did get rejected off uh, the 50-day moving average, which is going to be very, very key. And a lot of people are asking, well, Dan, when can I start uh, swinging stocks again on technology? When can I start, you know, have a, have a more exposure more exposure having uh, on the books. And, and the, the question to that is very simple. As soon as the Qs start reclaiming the 50-day moving average and start building, you hear, you, know, you hear me use the word build a lot. Uh, you know, the word build is basically a level gets taken out and now price action needs to be taking place above that level. The longer it builds above that level, right? The word build, the longer it builds above that level, the higher probability that it's going to advance to the next supply zone. And if you do believe in the, well, look, here's the area of concentration here. Uh, it took out the 320 level, and now it needs to start making its way back into the 330. So the, the line is pretty much drawn in the sand. Again, I, I don't think we need to guess uh, going into this week, 320 to the upside, right? Very, very, this is not a subjective number. This is not a number you should be uh, having a, a wild argument with some random person on social media. This is the number. This is where we got rejected. So we need to reclaim 320 on the queues, and then we'll start making our way to 324 where it got rejected one, two, three, four times, right? 324, and ultimately, if that gets confirmed, uh, we go back into the 330 level, and then obviously any uh, confirmation or any build or any reclaim, whatever uh, word you want to use, above 330 gets us back to all-time highs. And then the NASDAQ starts playing catch-up with very impressive moves, again, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, in the Spies, and even the Russell, right? You, you know, even the Russell uh, has been doing incredibly well. For some reason, my charts are not updating. Okay, there you go. Uh, even the Russell has been doing uh, incredibly well. But again, the big lag is the NASDAQ and kind of going back uh, to the flip side of what you need to know going into this week. So if we're stuck in this little channel here, and understand one thing, the prime focus, at least on Monday, and until we get a very, very clean view of which way the NASDAQ 100 is going to flow next, we understand our levels, right? 320 to the upside and 311 to the downside. We close above 320, that's green. We close below 311. There's a very, very good high probability that we're gonna start retesting the lows. Now, before somebody turns around saying, there's no way we can retest the lows, why? This has been the lagging group for a very, very long time as everything else is taking, you know, is, is taking all time highs. So it's a very, very important number. The fact that we also know, because remember, it's all about collecting data. The fact that we also know we have such a tight range here from 320 to 311, the focal point going into this week, at least the start of the week, at least until one of those two levels gets confirmed, maybe stay away from beta, right? Maybe stay away from it. Because again, if the Q is gonna trade in a very, very tight channel, right? That means the individual stocks, more than chances than not, can be trading in individual channels as well. So if you look at the individual stocks, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? Look at Netflix, right? Not here, not there, stuck in a channel. Look at Apple, right? Not here, not there, stuck in a channel. Facebook that actually showed some strength came right back into the channel as well. Look at Amazon, right? Everything's stuck, you can see here. And Amazon is so below, like Amazon's gonna, re they really need to split their stock. I mean, that's, I mean, look at the channel, look how many trees in the forest they're gonna have to go through just for the stock to go higher again. It's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, Alibaba got hit on some China news. This stock is completely dead in the water. Uh, NVIDIA, that, you know, it's been a really good trader. It really, really has been. You know, again, stuck underneath supply. So the, the NASDAQ really needs a lot of work to do. And my focus, and, and the funny thing is it actually started on Friday session. My focus on Friday was away from beta. If you look at, and we'll talk about the pivots in a second, there was not one stock that I put on uh, the Twitter feed, right? The private Twitter feed that had anything to do with beta. Uh, just because the IWM is so strong and there's such a big aggressive presence uh, in the small, smaller priced uh, speculation names, it's actually giving us a lot more flexibility to trade names that have nothing to do with the NASDAQ 100. And again, as much as I love trading beta, and that's kind of my prime focus, and it has been uh, for the last, uh, you know, I'd say eight and a half, almost nine years out of my 21 years of trading, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there on Monday watching, uh, you know, good value uh, go to waste because, you know, Netflix is stuck in a channel or, 
um, you know, or uh, Alibaba doesn't want to do anything. You know, I'm going to go where the money flow is. So the key is, especially if you are, uh, you know, if you are a trader and you have a very specific group that you trade, whether you trade, you know, uh, Bitcoin again, this kind of really does represent how how strong uh, speculation money flow is, and it's almost like a mirror image of what's going on with the, with the Russell. You know, Bitcoin's at 60,000 60, this morning. Saturday morning, it's around uh, 11, 11, you know, around 11:30. It really does demonstrate that there is no fear in this tape, even though that the Nasdaq went down uh, three weeks in a row prior to. Um, this past week, there was no fear, right? At least there was no fear uh, in in the trading aspect of things. The Bitcoin stocks have been reflecting the strength from Bitcoin. You see all these NFT stocks going crazy, Bitcoin stocks going crazy. You have alternative uh, fuel names because of the Biden administration starting to wake up as well. So there's a lot of value in other places. And I've, I've always maintained the fact you could be very, very stubborn and get chopped up into this tech space especially starting to, in the starting of the week, uh, going in on Monday or Tuesday, or you could look, uh, you could do, an, and I did a really thorough uh, charting session this morning. I did one last night, and there was some really good value uh, coming into this week, right? Really coming into this week that have nothing to do with Netflix, has nothing to do with Tesla, has nothing to do with Apple. And a lot of people turn around and say, well, Dan, Tesla is gonna start its next leg up. Yeah, I mean, maybe, right? Maybe, again, again, huge, it mirrored the Nasdaq 100. It's exactly the same way. We had some monster, monster moves on Tesla to the downside, to the upside. But even on Tesla, you already know where the value is on Tesla. You don't have to guess, right? You have the channel here. You have one, two, three candles in a row. And all you have to do is look at the chart and see the, the top of the channel, where, where its supply is. If it starts confirming this channel, then yeah, maybe it goes back to uh, the 50-day moving average around the 770 area. But it has to clear it out. You can't just say, well, Tesla's going higher. What Based on what? Because you need it to go higher? You want it to go higher? Or somebody turn around and say, no, 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 Tesla's going to go lower. It's going to retest the lows. We don't know yet, right? Again, we don't need to guess. The top of the channel gives you a green light. If it starts getting below the five-day moving average, well, yeah, there's a high probability. Then it will test the, the, the bottom again. But don't guess, right? Don't guess. Don't anticipate. Uh, nobody cares about your opinion. Nobody cares about my opinion. It's all about price action. We don't have to be the, you know, to be the smartest person in the room. This, this business is not about being smart. You, don't, you can't be dumb, but you don't need to be smart. All you need to be is practical. You need to be patient. You have to have a, a good ironclad process and don't anticipate price action. Let it tell you what's going to happen next. And if you look at, if you look at um, Friday's pivots, and there were some very, very aggressive pivots, um, the one thing you'll notice, again, the common denominator, uh, as we've been talking about for, for a long, long time now, the, the game right now, if, you, if, you, if you're an aggressive intraday trader, and I've been kind of uh, talking about this a lot, I mean, especially in the last like three, four months, but the game right now is pretty, pretty the same, right? Especially as speculation money goes. The formula is this. You have repeat out of the money, aggressive call buyers coming in in a name. One after another, after another, after another, after another, right? Then as long as it confirms the daily chart, that option flow, that aggressive option flow dictates the price of the stock, what happens next. And that formula has been exactly the same, uh, no matter how good or how bad the price action was. That's the market. That is where the common denominator has been playing out over and over again. And again, I've, I've you know I've said this for you know I've said this for, for for a long time now. You don't need to be an options player to get an options scanner. Find where the the monster order flow is coming from. And once it starts correlating the daily chart, usually a uh, good thing is going to happen. So let's talk about Friday's session, and I'll give you guys some ideas of kind of what I like uh, for this week. And, and again, this is you know this is where I you know this is basically how the day played out. I go look, ninety nine percent of beta, okay, which is the mega cap uh, cult stocks. Uh, they're in the middle of the channel, so we need to be patient again with them today and turn our attention to other areas as we saw yesterday, okay, which was, was Thursday, uh, NVIDIA, Netflix, they finally came out of their channels and had pretty good spikes, but, but the, that's not where the attention of the market flow is. That's not where the attention of the active trader is. It's on other areas, so I wanted to make sure, and if you look at uh, the Twitter feed, you know, again, there's no beta. There's literally not one beta stock here, but again, it's not the money we want, excuse me, not, not the market we want, it's the market we have that we have to take advantage. So let's talk about 
about this uh, Dropbox. Again, that was the formula. They came for the $26, $27 calls. Uh, Dropbox is a name that's been rumored for a while now uh, for either private equity or some sort of takeover. I mean, this thing, this thing has been forever uh, on the tongues of a lot of speculation. So uh, Dropbox 2580, 26 needs to build. Again, the word build, it has to trade and build a new base uh, over that level. So here is the you know Dropbox 2580, 26. Uh, big move here, goes, it went to the 27, uh, 2740s. Uh, I still like it for this week. If the market continues to be good, uh, it looks like it's going uh, higher there as well. Uh, QS I still like, it didn't trigger, but I, I really like this QS. The, the, the weird part about QS, if you look and you go through like the option flow, QS, they've been, they've been having some pretty aggressive bets, especially towards the summer month expiration. Uh, somebody came in a couple of days ago for the, I think June 85 calls. Um, I like this chart. It hasn't it, it hasn't confirmed yet, but look at this thing. If if this thing confirms, you can see here, it just it's building again, right over uh, over the 50-day moving average, two days in a row. If it starts taking out this channel here, this thing has room to like sixty-eight dollars. So you should definitely keep an eye on it for this week. Uh, Tcom again, a name that has nothing to do with beta. Uh, Forty-two needs to build. Here was Tcom, right. It took out the 42 and went to 44. Really nice move on TCOM. Uh, Workhorse never got to the 1785, uh, 18 area. Uh, it's it's still in that in that fight in that fist fight with the United States Postal Service. God knows what's going to happen there, but I, I still like that area. If it's if this week it starts taking out 18, it should give uh, it should give a move. Uh, XONE apparently it uh, triggered after I logged off for the day. I like this chart. Uh, 36 needs to build. Right, look at XONE, uh, 36 needs to build. It finally got above this channel here of 36, close at 36, uh, 36, 40s. I like it, I think there's a shot against the 38 this week. Uh, Plantier, right, a lot of order flow as well. Uh, again, it stopped right at 27, guys, that's the number. You know, here's, you know, that's the number. I'm giving you a pretty good, you know, pretty good setup here. If this thing starts building uh, over that 27 level, look at this uh, PLTR, right? Look at look at it. This is now the second day in a row. Same thing as um, same thing as QS is closing above supply. If it starts confirming this whole channel here, maybe it gets to 28 and a half, maybe it gets to 30. And again, a lot of good uh, option flow as well. Near term $30 expiration uh, on the name as well. Uh, Penn National Gaming, uh, obviously the Prez, right? The whole Barstool crew. Uh, Penn 130, 150, 132 needs to build. Uh, here is Penn, right? Took out that 132. Again, not a big move at all. We traded the 33. I still like it higher. Uh, if it starts confirming this 33 area, should get the 37. Again, assuming uh, the market doesn't die an angry death. Uh, Jumia never got to this 50 level. I still like it for this week. Um, again, TCOM take on the way up. And this is this is the most amazing part. The Qs just did not participate. And if you look at uh, what the Dow did, right? What the S&P did. Uh, what the you know the Russell did? Look at many look at many of these stocks, uh, Nasdaq Nasdaq stocks. Not only did not participate, they got hammered, right? I mean, again, look at Facebook hammered, right? Look at the you know look at the, look at Alibaba, right? Taken down. I mean, these names. It's not like you know they were just flat. I mean, these, the market was exploding, and just these stocks uh, weren't participating. Amazon, uh, same thing as well. So you know again. That's not where the money flow is right now. Both not they're not longs, they're not shorts. We're waiting for uh, more guidelines from uh, from the Nasdaq 100 macro. Uh, Tesla obviously never got to 666. Uh, Lenders Club again, another perfect example. They were coming for the March uh, 17. Uh, this was in January, February, March, April. Excuse me. They were coming for the the buyers are coming in. Repeat buyers for the 17 calls. Uh, 1430 needs to build. Here was Lending Club, right? And so it took out the 1430 and stock went to 1530s. Again, it looks like uh, more upside there. Uh, I traded Lending Club, I traded Dropbox, take on the way up. Da 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 da. Uh, DS, little stock, right? Uh, you know, 310 needs to build. Uh, again, here it is, repeat 
uh, 319 $5 call buyers. Here is DS. Again, not a huge move, but maybe it is a big move. I don't know, right? It took out 310. I didn't trade this thing, but it took out 310 and went to 330. Is it a 20-cent move on a $3 stock big? I, again, I don't know, right? It all depends what you trade. So uh, this thing looks looks like it's going higher uh, as well. But again, if you took it, a 20-cent move on a $3 stock is not bad uh, at all. So I, I think going into this week, um, for, for, for the macro view of the NASDAQ 100, I'm kind of waiting. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas um, that I kind of like for this week. I do kind of like this week. Smaller names um, that look pretty good here. I, I definitely like Plantier, okay, PLTR. Um, I want to see it kind of confirm this channel here. If it does, again, I don't think the first move is going to be huge, but you could get like a dollar, dollar and a half. Any close, though, over 28 can start a really big cycle. So that's going to be a very, very important area. Um, I like the CLNE. Um, you know, it kind of goes into the whole... Uh, you know, the whole Biden clean energy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, first close above supply. If it starts confirming uh, Friday's channel, it has a lot of room as well. BlackBerry, right? The meme stops, have, the meme stocks have been uh, kind of going nuts. Look at BlackBerry, right? Not horrible, not, uh, not interesting, right? Really interesting. It stopped right at the linear regression line. If it starts confirming this linear regression line, maybe it starts opening up. Uh, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, Friday with a two dollar and fifty cent price target. This thing has, you know, this thing definitely has a history of making multiple day runs. Here it went from like thirty eight cents to like a dollar seventy. Pretty decent push on Friday. If this thing any close above a dollar on this thing, you know, who knows? Maybe it goes back. Uh, to the areas as well. Other than that, all beta is going to be pushed to the side until we get a clean confirmation. Uh, guys, the, the one thing is for all you guys who are joining us uh, in the live webinar this week, uh, this up and coming week, or on, on the Twitter feed, uh, please watch the workshops this weekend. Uh, again, and just keep on re watching them. Again, I, I could feed you pivots till you're blue in the face, including Sunday. But again, if you don't understand, you know, the moving parts, you're, you're, you're doing yourself. A tremendous uh, disservice. So guys, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay blessed. Love you all. And God's help. I'll see you all next week. Take care.